Hello and welcome to Technology Update. Coming up on today's show. Russia's first solar regatta was held on the Moscow River on a sunny day at the end of July. In the competition, nine teams from Russian unis and one from Monaco rode the waves in their solar-powered boats in a race to the finish. As well as demonstrating the capabilities of today's solar tech, the event aims to promote renewables, hands-on education and the business opportunities that come with them. Monaco's Team Synergy was the winner of its class in the 2014 Solar One Monte Carlo Cup. With its sleek curves and hydrofoils, it looked the favourite to win the Moscow Regatta as well. The last thing on everyone's mind when the green flag flew. In a surprising turn of events, Synergy's foils weren't quite as graceful around the corners as they'd proven to be along the straights, and the boat lost precious seconds on each turn. This gave Riazan, with its classic boat design, all the opportunity it needed to close the gap. After sailing neck and neck down the strait, Synergy was left dead in the water. In Riazan, while most people were enjoying the weather, swimming or playing volleyball, others were making the most of the sun in a different way. We caught up with the regatta team from the Riazan State Radio Technical University. While many of the other competitors' boats were built purely for speed, this team went for practicality as well. Their solar boat has room enough for six people, making it ideal for weekend fishing trips. However, at the flick of a switch, the position of the roof can be adjusted, turning the casual cruiser into a streamlined racer. In this position, the center of gravity is lowered and wind resistance reduced, optimizing the boat's turning performance and maximizing its acceleration. And take it from me, the power of the sun is definitely enough to set the wind running through your hair. The Solar Sailor is 5.6 meters long and 2.1 meters wide. It's propelled by a 5 kilowatt outboard motor hooked up to two lithium polymer battery blocks, together weighing 160 kilograms and making up half of the boat's overall displacement. The solar panels on the roof and front generate up to 1.4 kilowatts of power, which can fully charge the batteries in about 10 hours. On a full charge, the boat can run for up to 8 hours at a leisurely 7 kilometers an hour, or 1.5 hours at its max speed of 25 kilometers. The boat was built in only two months in the business incubator at the Technical University. Before it got anywhere near the open water, the team of six current and former students made sure it was seaworthy in their improvised dock. During this stage of testing, the team streamlined the vessel's weight distribution, powered up the propeller, and of course checked for leaks. Given the short time frame, the team used the Soviet Progress 4 as a base. This boat has great performance and seagoing characteristics, as well as a low planing speed. This boat was originally developed for low-power petrol engines. The team completely overhauled the rest of the vessel. The upper half is made from an aluminium frame strengthened with extruded foam polystyrene and covered in fiberglass. The hefty batteries were mounted on sliders so the boat's ballast can be shifted on the go to suit weather, load and race conditions. Close attention was also paid to the electronics to maximise the juice squeezed out of every drop of sunlight and ensure the batteries are charged evenly. We built this boat for a competition and when the time came for us to take part, the boat had been fully charged entirely by the sun. We just took the upper solar panel outside, while keeping it connected to the controllers. As we monitored the recharging process, we saw that there is no need for any sort of external power source. The world-class solar panels were supplied locally by one of the team's sponsors, the Rezan Metal Ceramics Instrumentation Plant. The production process starts by cleaning and visually inspecting the external glass pane. The surface of the glass is slightly rough to trap as much light as possible reflected from the solar cells beneath. Once the inspection is complete, the panes are carefully put to one side ready to be used in the final assembly later on. The millimetre thin wafers that make up the photovoltaic cells are soldered together into rows before being mounted on the backing sheet. They then pass along a backlit conveyor where any flaws or cracks in the semi-metal cells would shine right through, before being soldered together in series. To prevent any dust or grime getting into the finished product, a thin ethylene vinyl acetate film is placed on top. 
then the whole panel is sealed by what's basically a giant laminating machine. The finished panels then roll off the production line and into testing. The solar panels are checked by blasting them with an artificial sunlight machine and measuring the amount of electricity that comes out the other end. The firm's products can transform the sun's light into usable electricity with an efficiency of up to 17%. Despite only launching solar panel production in 2008, the company's wares can be found in 42 countries around the world. Meanwhile, back in Moscow, the solar regatta turned into a two-horse race with Samara hot on Rezan's tail. The nimble trimaran proved just too fast for the multi-purpose transformer and in a nail-biting finish went on to win the race. With more teams expected to participate, there promises to be even more drama in next year's event.